All right, picking up where we left off, um, we're actually going to do example four first before we get into the properties and proofs. And this is a good lead into that because these type of questions are going to ask you for additional information to prove or to show that the two triangles pictured are congruent. A lot of times there won't be any markings on them, but instead there'll be information in a little paragraph or a couple sentences that you'll have to use and mark on here. Um, so here's, here's one example that might help you kind of understand that a little bit better. Um, they're going to give you information. Given information is vital to be able to do proofs, so we're always going to be have, given something. So first we're given angle LKM, and um, that angle, if you trace the angle, start with LKM, that's this angle right here. That says that's congruent to angle NKM. So we are going to make those markings. That's not additional information. That's given information. So that's not, that's not nothing new. And another thing that's not new is the fact that they share a side, okay? But we still need to write that little slash on there to visualize that, yes, there is a pair of congruent sides. It's the same side, MK. And if these triangles were to split up, that segment will still be the same length. Okay, so we got to mark it anyway. And so the question becomes, what do I need to put on this diagram to show that these two triangles are congruent, in this case, by side angle side? So I need to add something to that. Now I have, to, I have a side, I have an angle, which means I need another side mark to show the side angle side relationship. And if I mark side MN and ML, well, that's not going to cut it because I don't have the angle between those two sides. So it's going to have to be this side here, NK, and this side, LK. And if you look at the triangle at the bottom, we have this side, this side, and the angle between. Same over here, this side, this side, and the angle between. So that is the markings we need. Now what we write says what piece of information is necessary. What we write is that congruent statement just relating the two segments. So we will say segment NK, and put a little bar above it, is congruent to segment LK. That's the necessary information we need to show that those two triangles are congruent by side angle side. Now, if it asks for another reason, we might have something different. But in this example, this is the answer that's going to help you answer, get this right. So leading into proofs, we're going to need to kind of backtrack and, and talk about a few reasons and properties that help us make proofs a lot easier. So I'm going to start with the, the three big ones. The ones that probably come up the most often are vertical angles are congruent. Anytime you have a diagram that there's vertical angles, you've got to mark them. Okay? If it's not marked, mark them anyway. Vertical angles are always congruent. And that's going to be a valid reason that we use when we're doing a, a proof to show two triangles are congruent. Um, another thing is the reflexive property of congruence. I should have written of congruence. That's fine. And that is when they share a side. You'll often see that in a diagram where there is two triangles drawn, but, but you could make it easily one or overlapped. Um, you got to mark that shared side. That's the reflexive property. And finally, if you have parallel lines, this means parallel. If you have a diagram with parallel lines, like some of the ones that we saw before, let's say those are parallel. If you draw a segment connecting the two corners, this is called a transversal, by the way then the angles that are considered to be congruent in this specific diagram would be that angle and that angle. Those are alternate interior angles. You can do it a different way too. You can also you can look at them like this. You know, may, may, maybe the, um, the parallel sides are these two. And so in that case, the alternate interior angles would be those instead of the ones here and there. So it's always the ones between the parallel lines 
that are considered alternate triangles. We always mark those if we see the arrows. Now caution, the arrows don't count as congruent segments. They count to help you give you alternate interior angles or in some other cases different angles um, that you can show that are congruent to each other. Some other proof uh, reasons and proofs that come up um, and by by no means are these all of them but these are other big four ones that that will come up that you'll see in the proofs that we do later on. Definition of midpoint or midpoint theorem it's sometimes called is um, if you are given that let's say B is the midpoint of AC then what we can say if B is the midpoint of AC we can say segment AB is congruent to segment BC by the definition of midpoint because midpoint just means that I'm cutting that segment into two congruent parts so that's the reason for showing that two segments are congruent if you're given the fact that it's a midpoint. Now, if you're talking about the word bisect, bisect means to cut in half. So just a little bit differently, if I draw a line, if I say that line bisects AB or AC at point B, then by the definition of segment bisector or angle bisector, if it's an angle, because you can bisect an angle too, then you can say segment AB is congruent to segment BC, but the reason is just a little bit different. It's talking about bisect as opposed to midpoint. So just know the words that come before are generally going to be the ones that are going to be used in your reasons. Um, this one here, which is a, lot, a little confusing just because of all the, the words in it, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We often shorthand that to CPCTC, and sometimes you see it as definition of congruent triangles. And all that's saying is if you have two triangles that are congruent, so for instance, if I say triangle ABC and triangle DEF are congruent, if I'm given they're congruent, um, I, can, I can pull out pieces of it. So I can say, all right, um, angle A is congruent to angle D. Or segment AC is congruent to segment DF. If I'm given that those two triangles are congruent, I can pull apart the pieces. And that's all that's saying. This is generally used at the end of proofs. So this is a once in a while thing, um, but not very often. But at the end of proofs is generally when it gets used as a reason. And um, another reason, all right angles are congruent. That should be obvious. They're all 90 degrees. So if you have a 90 degree angle, and another 90 degree angle, well, they're going to be congruent to each other. So I'm stating the obvious here, but that does come up in some of the reasons. So we, we throw that on there on the reasons. And there are more of them, but um, the, the four here and the three ones are probably used, I would say, 90% of the time for your proof. So those are the ones I'm going to focus on right now. So let's get into setting up a proof. Um, here's our first example. Um, so I generally do these as a two column. I will write the word statements and reasons. Uh, you might need more space to write than this, and I might find that I do too, but for now I'm just going to work with the space I have. Now generally speaking, we do list our, our given information first. So we can list our given in any order. Generally it's at the beginning, but um, not always. And sometimes there's a flow to why we list it the way we do. So I'm going to start with the first piece of information. I'm going to split them up. Segment IE is congruent to GH. Why? It's given. So we write given. Same thing with uh, EF and HF. EF is congruent to HF. Give it. If those weren't marked, which they are in this case, you would mark them. You want your picture to have those markings on them. You're also given that F is the midpoint of GI. we got to list that.
All right, so the goal in this problem is to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. And remember, we would use one of the reasons for that, which, you know, we got SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS. And I'm, I'm going to leave off HL because they're not right triangles, so that won't be one of the reasons. So, but we don't have enough information yet. We have two sides. We do have a pair of vertical angles, but that's not the... I, I don't think that's the goal of this problem because we're talking about midpoint. But what can we get from the fact that F is a midpoint of this segment? Well, I can say that that segment is congruent to that segment. All right, that's the definition of midpoint. So once I've listed this information with its given uh, component, I'm going to go ahead and list, all right, segment IF is congruent to segment GF. That's not given, but the reason is definition of midpoint. Excuse my writing. So if you look at the statements, we have a pair of sides congruent, another pair, and another pair. That's that. These two triangles have been shown that all three sides are congruent. All three pairs of sides are congruent. So we're going to go ahead and write the last statement after it is whatever is after the word prove. That is our last statement. We do not write the word prove. The reason is never prove. The reason is one of these for congruent triangles. So we know that's going to be side, side, side. That's our answer. Um, you can um, you can number these if you want. Sometimes you see them numbered, just to make it a little bit easier to follow. Or you can bullet them, or put a little line to space them to space them out. That's up to you. As long as I can tell what you're writing, you're in good shape. This is a five-step proof. All right, um, proof number two. All right, in this diagram, it says explain why. That's prove. So, you know, don't don't let that trip you up. We, we want to prove that. And again, I'm going to set up a two-column proof because it's easy for me to kind of display my reasons and statements that way. So I'm going to go ahead and say statements and reasons. Oftentimes, you'll fill in the blank when you do proofs. Um, so those are a little bit easier. But um, if you don't, then um, I suggest always doing a two-column proof if you have to write one yourself. It's just easier to organize your thoughts. So in this diagram, angle S is congruent to angle Q. I'm going to write given. Um, those are marked on the diagram. If they were to, weren't, put a little marking on them. We're also given that um, segment RP bisects Angle SRQ, SRQ is at the bottom of this diagram. So that means that this angle is going to be cut in half because of the word bisect. Okay. But before I talk about those individual angles, I am going to write this given information. And I got to think about that. Um, what can I come get from bisect? Well, I need to mark those. So what am I marking that I have to put under statements from that? The name of this angle is SRP. So I'm going to say angle SRP is congruent to angle QRP. Now, even though we were given that it bisected, we weren't given specifically that those two angles were congruent. So that comes from the fact that that was bisected. So we would go ahead and write definition of, and we want to say angle bisector, but um, I'm okay with the word bisect, but I'm going to write angle bisector. An angle bisector is a segment or line or ray that, that cuts an angle into two congruent angles. So I have two angles. Well, I gotta have a side. I, I I don't have this side here or this side given. I can't mark those, but they do share a side. So anytime they share a side, mark it. 
state the name of that segment at segment PR. It is congruent to itself. It seems redundant, but we got to write that because we need to have three pieces of information to prove those two triangles are congruent. So segment PR is congruent to segment PR. What's that property? It's reflexive. And to finish that off, now that I have two angles and a side, I can go ahead and write this as my last statement. Because I have enough information to prove those two triangles are congruent now. And I want you to think about why those two triangles are congruent. Is it side, side, side? No, because I only have one side. Is it side, angle, side? No, because I only have one side, not two side. So which one of these is it? ASA or AAS? Well, the side not be marked is not between the two angles, so it can't be ASA. So it's going to be angle, angle, side. And there's your proof. Five steps again. Um, feel free to number them or put a line between them if you'd like. And uh, we got one more example. This is a fill-in-the-blank one. It's a, it's a flow proof. So with the flow proofs, they're, they're pretty much the same thing, except that um, a, you, there's two uh, layers to it. The top layer is the statement. Bottom layer is the reason. Um, and they, you've seen flow charts, I, I assume, so they all kind of lead to that final conclusion. Sometimes they go down, sometimes they go side, sometimes they're all over the place. Honestly, I prefer two columns, but these do have their place. So let's talk about some given information. Um, this AC is congruent to EC. That is given. You'll notice that that's written here already. So that reason there is going to be given. And the other given segments is AR and ER. So we say segment AR is congruent to segment ER. So write your givens in there. And also, this was given to you, although you could have come up with this on your own, I'm sure. Segment RC, since it's shared, is congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. All of this needs to be marked. So I'm going to start with AR and ER. They get a slash. I'm going to go to AC and EC. They get two. And RC and RC itself will get three because it's, you know, it's on its own. I don't have any information about the angles. However, my goal is to prove that two angles are congruent to each other. But before I can do that, I have to prove the two triangles are congruent to each other. And so that preliminary step here, before we prove the angles are congruent, are saying these two triangles are congruent. By what reason? Well, I only have sides. So that is your reason right here. So up here, we want to fill in the last statement, which is always after the word prove. And that's the CPCTC. That's the definition of congruent triangles or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Once you've proven the triangles congruent, you can pull out pieces, you know, this angle and that angle are congruent. Yes, they're congruent because I know these two triangles are congruent. I could have proven these two angles are congruent if I wanted to. All right, that's CPCTC. And um, that's it. So these are the proof examples. Hope this helps. Um, you should be able to attempt uh, the proof questions on your day two assignment. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask uh, me, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.